Hi guys, I'm Janet Fox and I'm the author of a number of books, The Charm Children of Rookskill Castle, which you might have read, and this book, which is the companion novel to Charm Children coming out this coming summer in August, late August, and I thought I'd read a little bit from the opening chapter to you today, just to entertain you while you're maybe home working, studying, and um, hopefully reading too, and writing. Um, so the Artifact Hunters is set in Rookskill Castle, um, in part where the Charm Children is also set. Rookskill Castle is a, a place in Scotland, and the year is 19, in this case in 1942, so during the very middle of World War II, and the story, this story, um, is about a boy who has to leave his home in Prague to um, uh, escape uh, things that are going on there, but there is another secret reason why he has to leave home, and that's the heart of this story. So let me read part of chapter one. Um, the chapter is called Guardian and Hunter. At well past midnight, in the deep cold of winter, a man moved like a shadow through the snowy streets of Prague. He kept his head down and walked with a quick pace, finding his route over the slick cobbles of Josephoff, through old habit trying not to stumble. Once, a cat startled him as it darted across the street. A black cat, of course, he noted with a brief, grim smile, and he paused for an instant. Somewhere above him, a window slid shut. Somewhere behind him, his family slept. His son slept, still oblivious. The man passed the Baroque facade of the Church of St. Nicholas, the stone statues of saints casting cold eyes downward. The great astronomical clock was silent at this hour, the apostles with their grave countenances hidden, the broad old town square deserted. He crossed the space as quickly as he could, keeping to the edges, making for the house of the stone bell, a carved bell that was as silent as the saints and the clock, and the alley that ran between it and Our Lady before Tim. He stopped only where he couldn't be seen from any direction, and then faced the wall that was crowned by the arch of a filled-in remnant door, the plaster just inches from his nose. On that wall was a faint painted symbol. It looked like a looping vine. He had to tug open at the top button of his overcoat. It was frigid, and the sudden chill penetrated to his bones to draw out what he required. He placed his hand against the plaster, and the air shimmered, the wall fading behind a watery veil, until a door appeared, a great carved oak door with no handle or lock, which swung open into darkness. He was through the door and gone, fading as always to nothing. The prowling cat and the saints, had they been looking an instant later, would have seen no door, only the great blank wall and the cobbles of the empty alley glistening with icy snow. So that's a part of the first chapter of the Artifact Hunters. And very soon, in chapter two, you meet this man's son, Isaac, as he's about to take a precarious, perilous journey to Scotland. I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you are reading and writing, and if you are, let me know. I would love to hear from you. Bye.